Hi everyone, here I am again with another what I'm sewing now video. I find this time of year a bit tricky with the sewings um, because they come at quite determined timings. Um, so September is a bit tricky because the early September sewings is sort of the last time for a lot of these um, for a lot of these seeds I'm sowing now to be able for the plant to grow big enough to then be planted out and grow on outside in time for the colder weather. Does that make sense? So if I were to sow these some of these seeds end of September, they might not have time to go big enough to be able to survive. And so I find it like I find it a bit stressful, like I need to get these in now, otherwise it's too late. And I actually know that I missed the timings a little bit for my spring onions. So I should have sowed these end of August, but I forgot. Uh, so I'm going to sow them now and hope that they will be big enough to then survive into the autumn and possibly winter. I am going to sow them later in September too, towards mid to end. But then they will be for growing undercover in the greenhouse. So that's... Uh, a bit more sheltered in there of course. I think outside you know I could protect them with fleas that's an option so some of these are for planting outside and then potentially protecting against the, the harshest weather with fleas so we'll see how the winter goes right. So a lot of the sowings now are still greens, uh, lettuces and so on so the, one of the first ones is lamb's lettuce and I have two packets here uh, I'm not sure I don't want to miss out on lamb's lettuce and I want to sow it now so I'm going to sow both and hope that at least one parcel germinates um, they should be fine but you never know and I have two par packets so I might as well I'm also sowing um, two types of spinach uh, so I sowed spinach in August too so this will be another sowing for hopefully overwintering a small plants outside. And then I have, um, and this is Medina, and then I have another uh, spinach, a uh, red spinach called Rubino, which I haven't tried before. And these are gifted seeds from uh, Seedcraft, which is a subscription seed box, which is pretty cool. So you get the seeds that are suitable for planting, sorry, for sowing that month. So this is the September issue. Uh, and then further on from that I have uh, wild rocket so I tried sowing rocket in August but my seeds didn't germinate the seeds were old and I saw on the pack that they say sow by 2020 so there's a bit of a cut off there so I bought new seeds so hopefully they'll work fine and then another one from Seedcraft is Mitsuna which is a oriental seed oriental salad uh, sorry and they should grow fine in the colder months. And then I have two herbs, coriander and dill. I've just planted out uh, another sowing from July. I've just gone in the beds. I have another sowing that's germinated from August and this will be the last sowing I do in September now. So these, uh, at least the coriander is likely to overwinter and the dill, I'm not sure how it'll fare. But we'll see. And then lastly, I've got some um, Calabrese, which is another new variety for me, Stromboli. So I usually don't sow Calabrese or broccoli this time now, um, but I'm gonna try it. So Nick from Seacraft says it's super doable, so I'll do it. And um, these are all going into a seed tray that I will then prick out into modules. And uh, in another uh, module tray, I'm going to sow some turnips, which is another one from Seacraft, and then my spring onions, as I mentioned. Oh, I forgot! Perpetual spinach. It's in a doggy poop bag, but I collected them from my plot neighbor. So it's perpetual spinach, which I haven't grown before. And uh, But he overwintered his. So they should be used to the climate. Hopefully the seeds have survived, being in this plastic bag. And uh, yeah, we'll see how that goes. So it's a new one to me as well. 
So it's a larger cooking spinach. And the seeds are quite large as well. I don't know if you can see that, they're pretty large. All right, so let's get in. So I, again, what I do, I mix my own little seedling compost, which is just general compost mixed with vermiculite or perlite. And uh, I water it before I sow the seeds and uh, you're ready to go. So you want the perlite or vermiculite or sharp sand or something like that to break up the compost. Otherwise uh, you risk not germinating your seeds because it gets too wet. And that is the biggest risk I find with seeds. They overwater them and that they either don't germinate at all or once they germinated, they get this fungal disease very quickly dampening off and basically you lose your seedling. So you don't want that. Um, and adding in uh, a, a material to break up the compost helps with aeration and and um, keeping the moisture level right. Right, so let's get into it. So how many do I have here now? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Right, so if that's the middle, so we need to do, so we'll just mark up five uh, rows on either side and I'll sew into those. So that's one and I need to fit two more in here. here. So I find it's quite easy uh, doing it this way. Um, for pricking out. You can also use a um, smaller tray if you have less seeds. All right, let's uh, get on with it. So I've been working from home now for a month because uh, I was furloughed before. So it's a bit different for me. I really kind of miss, um, you know, the chats that you get when you're in the office. You know, you're able to have a cup of coffee with someone. Um, just without making plans ahead of time, you know, which you kind of, you're missing out on a bit. So yes, you can make a, a Teams meeting and have your cup of coffee virtually. But it's just not the same, is it? Oh, nice packaging. So yes, quite a different uh, seed. So this perpetual spinach looks more like a beet seed, whilst the the F1 variety here looks more like a, a brassica seed, a bit bigger. It's quite interesting. Um, but I guess, um, yeah, the perpetual spinach is very closely related to chard. And that's why it looks like that. It looks very similar to chard. All right. So that was um, Rubino, Spinach, Rubino. But yes, so I need to go and buy a moving away present for my next door neighbor. It's really sad. So we've lived here three and a half years and really got to know her really well. You know, she was, she knew us before we had our daughter and, you know, she's kind of become a, both of our parents live away from here. So she's kind of been like a, like a bonus granny almost. So it's really sad she's moving away and we're getting new neighbors tomorrow. So I need to go buy her some sort of present. So this is a spinach Medina. I'm not really sure what to get her. Um, I could just get an orchid, uh, but it's a bit boring. 
and I obviously left it super late. <laughs> um, but what else is new? Right, so let's do the calibers. So these I find definitely best started like this for pricking out because if I sew them in a module straight away, they become really leggy. So by sewing them like this, I can prick them. Oh my God. Can you see that? <laughs> this is, uh, it's called Stromboli. Why are they like that? I wonder if they're covered in something. They must be like some sort of thing to make it better for germination or something. I've never seen that before. But yes, so I like to prick them out and plant them deep in a module up to the first leaves. And that means you eliminate any legginess. And then when you plant them out again, you plant them deep. And then the plant is much more secure in the ground. Otherwise, there's a lot of wind rock. And, um, you know, these are huge plants, really. They look so weird, like bright green little pebbles. Oh, what am I talking about? These are, the herbs are not for pricking out. <laughs> oh, where's my brain today? Right, they're for, okay, so I've made way too many. Should be fine. Right, next up, Mitsuna. Oh, I'm glad I realized that before I went ahead. So Mitsuna is something I've never really grown before. It's an oriental salad. And by looks of it, closely related to brassicas again. I guess brassicas are very cold tolerant. Um, but yeah, so they so it can be a very welcome green when nothing else really is cropping well. So it's you know, but I'll see if I like it. Um, Right, and then we have Rocket. So I'm not the biggest fan of Rocket, but my partner really likes it. And um, I find growing it in spring is really tricky. Well, it's a lot of seeds. Um, I just find them bolting straight away. So, and they also get absolutely massacred by flea beetle. So, which is not very nice because you eat the leaves. Oh, oh yeah, I remember now. Absolutely minuscule seeds. So you always end up sowing too many. I should have made a bigger hole. gonna get rocket everywhere so this is a wild rocket as opposed to um, salad rocket so it's a it's a perennial so you basically you can just leave it and it will keep giving you a nice crop probably mostly in spring um, but you can also just rip it out and start again so I had a rocket yes because it didn't germinate last time. And then we have two packets of lamp flares. And this is another one that just does not do very well during the hotter months. So I'm not sowing it until now. And it's quite nice having a bit of variation, not just having lettuce. Throughout the year, you know? So save this one for the winter months. And that was, uh, so it's so two different types of lamps. So this is Favor and this one is Valentine. So we'll see if either one is better than the other. Lamps, just Favor. I wonder what the difference actually is though. Mm. 
Yes. Yeah, I'm really missing visiting our parents. And they're really missing visiting my daughter. So it's quite sad. I don't think they're going to see her. It's going to be a year and a half, maybe, until my parents see my daughter again. It's shocking. Not a year and a half. Uh, sorry, uh, maybe a year from now until we can safely travel. You know, they live abroad. Yeah. Well, we'll see. Let's hope for a vaccine soon, though. Eh? Right, so. Oh, I didn't label that one. So that was Valentin. Well, fun fact, Valentin is my granddad's second name. So hopefully that one should do best. Right, so I'm just gonna sprinkle on some compost. So the rule of thumb is just the barely the width of the seed. And the way to think about it is just, you know, how does it happen naturally? There's no seed police there checking how deep everything is in the ground, right? More important is to firm it down so that it has good contact with the compost. And I'm artificially making the temperature even for these seeds. So I'm going to put it in a house for them to germinate. And then um, as soon as they start poking out, I'm going to take them outside so they have full sunlight. So the seeds don't need sunlight. To, well, most seeds don't need sunlight to germinate. They need constant warmth. There are some exceptions like... Um, uh, what are they called? Um, celery and celeria, right? Sorry, that was <laughs> that's not a great size. Yet. All right, so we'll make a little hole. So these are multi-sewing modules I'm doing here. So we we'll start with the dill. So I'm going to sow three seeds and hope that two germinates. If more germinate, then I'll thin them. So, you know, you don't have to be 100% accurate as long as you then thin it before planting out it means that sowing your seeds is much quicker and dill I find is super quick at germinating which is great so dill and coriander is also fairly good so I always have problems with my coriander that I always goes to seed and it's the same for these so we'll do three and this is a uh, coriander cruiser which is a pretty good variety I'm gonna try and save seeds from some of my previous sowings so that I can replenish these um, yeah it's not an f1 variety so should be fine and it's the only coriander I grow so have any cross contamination <laughs> sorry cross pollination right so coriander okay. so the last seed craft packet is turnips so I think I'll sow oh, five Oh, I made a bodge job of that. Also, five seeds per module and plant out four. I find that works very well for turnips. So it means that you can. Oh my goodness, these are also covered. So this is, yeah, it's an F1 cross as well. These are crazy. It makes it easy to count the seeds. 
So these are blue. The other ones were green. Oh, they look like they look like poison. <laughs> oh, that's crazy. Hopefully they will then perform super well because they're like super primed. And these are turnip, Tokyo cross. And then as a salad, I mean, I can't really remember, but I think there's a lot, so I'm gonna. I'm going to put in 10 seeds per module mm, and then if I find later on there's way too many I can always spin them. I love onion seed, they look like little pieces of charcoal. Yeah, so, you know, I'm not going to count this, it's too many to count, but we'll put in a fair few. And um, hopefully you guys can make it. But yeah, as I said, I'll sow some more later on then. And I don't have a label right now for the last one, but I'll get that sorted. So then just again, just cover up a little bit. And then I always water seed trays and the module trays from below because I find if I try to do it from above it'll just flood and all the seeds will just go everywhere especially if you're in a tray you know it means you have no control <laughs> like the seeds will just have mixed it and um, yeah you've lost all labeling so that does not work for me all right, excellent. So I hope uh, this has been informative for you as well and that you can get on with some more sewing. I'm gonna do another one of the sewing videos with my second September sewing. And yeah, I mean, I'm sorry if there's just too many, but it feels like many people don't know what to sew now, but it's, it's very important to get the timings right. So uh, yeah, I'll leave you with that and uh, happy growing. <laughs>